But we're gonna feed off your energy, right? Everything is a co-creation. Every single thing is a co-creation. So you wanna stand up and dance, sit up and dance. You wanna shout something out, shout it out. Okay. Massive, massive thank you to everyone who made this possible. You guys look at this is like the biggest business event Tulum has seen. We got co-working Tulum, Peg, he's been around, you guys have all seen him, um, absolutely amazing. The Marriott staff team, I came in today, just shout out to the Marriott staff team back there, Ayla. They're like helping me, we had one microphone, my computer wasn't working, the registration list was, and it's all the perfect things. These are the yes moments, right? These are the moments where we're like, okay, am I gonna be victim to my circumstance or am I gonna figure this fuck out? So many thank yous. I got my staff team out there. We've got um, staff team in the back, Mateus. Um, anyone that you need to get our speakers. So we are here to support you. But that idea of victim to circumstance or figuring it out actually was something that really to you. I want to work as your assistant athletic director for all of next year. You let me in on every meeting that you can legally do, and I will do it for free. I spent that entire year working at least 25 hours a week for free. The value isn't always in the dollar or the peso. <laughs> that following year, 10 years ago, I applied to a bigger district, bigger school, Division I. 300 applicants applied. Seven rounds of interviews and I got that job. Thanks. Woo! So I thought that was it, I thought that was my life. I really thought I was gonna just be teaching sports and being an athletic director for the rest of my life. That's truly, truly, I promise you, that is what I believed 10 years ago if you had asked me. Well, same day as my very first day my brand new job as a high school athletic director, I found out I was expecting a child. Wasn't exactly in the plans. We were excited. I was so excited. In fact, every week I bought my unborn child a book and I wrote a letter in it. Dear baby, your mom and dad love you so much. We cannot wait to meet you. Hugs and kisses, mom and dad. Books on a football field. Dear baby, your mom and dad love football. We can't wait to share it with you. When my daughter was born 10 years ago, she had heart complications. I had open heart surgery. It was considered a relatively simple case. They said not to worry. I had the same procedure, went on to play college athletics and run many marathons. So we were discharged from the hotel. I'm sorry, from the hospital, which was a hotel. It, it pretty much was my hotel. I spent 99 nights in that hospital. 99 nights. And though I had thought athletics was my greatest teacher. Now, grief became my greatest teacher. Because after 99 nights in the hospital, four surgeries, my daughter went on life support, she came off life support, and lived coming off life support. She passed away about a week later in my arms. Her 10th birthday would have been three days ago. Well, it was. She just wasn't here to celebrate it. And why I share this with you is one, as I shared with the speakers before when we ground it down, the fact that I am standing here able to pour into you when 10 years ago I couldn't get out of bed. Nine years ago I couldn't get out of bed. I believe so deeply in your possibility. I believe so deeply in how much stronger you are than circumstance. But here's the thing, time doesn't heal. Do you understand that? Time gives you the opportunity to choose into healing. Do we see the difference? Time doesn't build your business. Time will give you the opportunity to choose into learning how to build your business. Grief taught me so many lessons, 
so many lessons. It became my biggest teacher. It humbled me. I thought I did everything right. I read all the books, did all the things. I made it about me at first. Like, what did I do wrong? Anyone relate to that? It was very humbling to learn this had nothing to do with me. This actually had nothing to do with me. What made it harder was that my daughter's case was termed a catastrophe. Now, I learned so much in this, and one of the things I learned was to face fear, because when she was sick, I couldn't hold her. So she was lying in bed, she had a lot of tubes in her, and there was a moment in my mind, very fleeting, where I was like, maybe I should just love her a little less. It'll hurt a little less. I see people experience it in their business. Maybe I'll just go a little less in. Because if it doesn't work out, it won't feel so bad. Can anyone relate? Yeah. yeah. But my daughter Lehman taught me actually the way to go is to go all the fuck in. Because you know what? I didn't get the result I wanted, but I'm so proud of the process because I was the crazy mom. I was the crazy, crazy mom in the hospital. I'm fighting, she's got a million tubes in her, I'm fighting them to dim the lights. They're like, we don't think the lights are the problem, ma'am. <laughs> I don't fucking care. <laughs> Dim the goddamn lights. I fought with them to clear tubes off of her. I wanted to motivate. She had so much fluid on her body. We had to get it off. So I took water bottles, actually bottles, and I poured water into them. I found markers in the art supply room. I pulled the markers apart, and I put the ink in the water bottle, so you could see it. And I would measure how much fluid the hospital team had managed to take off her that day, the athletic coach and me trying to motivate the nursing staff team with a sign that said, win the day laden. At this point, my daughter was unrecognizable. I hung pictures of her when she was healthy all over the hospital room. I mean, I'm talking 50 photos. And the doctors came and I said, that's the girl you're treating. And I got a sound recorder. And I recorded myself reading her those books I bought her. Book after book after book. So when she had the beeping and when she couldn't be held, she heard my voice. The hospital actually does that now. They got recorders for families. They did little light, her legacy. My point is, the worst thing in the world arguably happened to me, and what gets me through, one, is trust and faith in God, whatever you believe in the Creator to be. Trust and there's a bigger plan that I don't fucking know yet because I don't have the ability to see it, but I'm gonna. But number two is I look back and I feel really good about how I played the game of being a mom. I feel really good about how I went all in even though I got the result, I did not get the result I wanted. My invitation to you is to look at where can I go more all in on the process and trust that no matter what the result is, I'm going to move through. Because what I see is so much struggle, so much struggle, is we go half in, we don't get the result because we're only going half in, and then we make a story of like, I must suck, my prices are too high, no one likes me, I shouldn't post on social media, and then we just jump out. These are your dreams. It's your business. One of the other lessons that I learned in grief, and this is actually what I do believe, even though I love coaching business, I'm going to get into how business has grown me as an entrepreneur before I hand this off to Eric. I had this moment. I was walking in downtown Boston. We spent 99 nights at Boston Children's Hospital. That's where we were. Two things. Two really powerful moments. Anyone heard of the Boston Marathon? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. It's, a great, it's the most famous marathon in, in the world. It runs right by the hospital. And it actually starts in my hometown. We were in the hospital on Marathon Monday 2014, and they told us we were going home that Friday. We had a discharge date. We were supposed to go home. And I took a video of my daughter later, and I still have it. And she's kicking her legs. And I sent it to my brother, her uncle TJ. And I said, hi, uncle TJ. We're stretching, we're 
We're stretching our legs for the marathon. He was coming to visit her. And I said, Laban, next year, we are running that marathon and we are crossing that finish line for this hospital. Because they had just told us we were going to go home. Fast forward after she passed away, I get an email about the marathon and registering. There's no way, I can't even like, get out of bed. And I realized, this is a huge lesson I learned in grief, nothing is more valuable than the integrity of my word. Nothing is more valuable than the integrity of my word. And I gave my word that I was crossing that finish line for my daughter, Laban. So I ran, not just that year, but five consecutive years. I became an ambassador for the Boston Children's Hospital Marathon team, and I crossed every single year carrying her ashes. Oh my God. <laughs> the second, now, I'm sharing this because it's, a lesson that I learned through the most painful thing in my life, but I don't want you to have to have the most painful thing in your life to learn the lesson. Do you get that? Like, if I learn these lessons by going through such, such tragedy, such trauma, can I help you learn them without having to do that? That's my goal. That's why I share. And I'm going to tell you very shortly, I did not want to share at all. Gerard's probably like, what the fuck happened to this girl the last five years? <laughs> The second biggest lesson I learned in my grief journey, among so many, I'll give you two more actually, one was radical responsibility. No one was going to heal me. I wanted my partner at the time to save me. I went to every parent group. No one was going to heal me. I had to take responsibility. I, I remember how pissed I was when I had to pay to go to grief therapy. I was like, I have to what? had a million dollar in medical expenses, no big deal. Had health insurance, don't worry. <laughs> the most powerful lesson though that I learned, I was walking down the street of Boston. I was walking by the hospital. Sometimes I'd just go walk by there to feel close to my daughter. I didn't know what to do. Sometimes I would just get in my car and drive. If you've ever felt lost, I have been there. I would literally get in my car to just drive aimlessly. And I found myself in, in walking down right by the hospital, and I had this moment, I swear to God, this bright light came, call it Laden, Creator, Source, whatever you want. And it said, Melissa, you've been walking around like you were entitled to a healthy child. You're worthy of one. You can be heartbroken you didn't have one. You can grieve. But the truth is, you're not entitled to anything in this world. And I realized how backwards I had it. I spent most of my life subconsciously entitled. Traffic? Ugh! As if I was entitled to no traffic. Right? That job I wanted, that first athletic director job, shocked I didn't get it. As if I was entitled, because I'd been there, I should have gotten it. I know everyone in here has some level where we are subconsciously thinking we're entitled to something, and I'm here to tell you with love, because love is actually my love language. Honesty is actually my love language. So I'm telling you with love, we're not entitled to anything. So when you want to build your business, I invite you not to thinking, it's like, what's my business going to do for me? What can I do for my business? Because it was after my daughter passed that my life really changed. I really didn't give a shit about who was playing quarterback. And I'm getting parent emails. Johnny's not quarterback. So-and-so's bus was late. The soccer team got no uniforms again. We haven't yet. I don't care. My daughter died. You think I care about uniforms? But here's the reality. It was actually my job to care. It was my job to care. So I began building my business and I began building a mindset health coaching, holistic health coaching in particular, and I made my first investment in a mastermind. I didn't even know what the heck I was doing. I didn't have a product. I didn't have a price. I didn't have a lead magnet. I had like a thousand followers on Instagram, and I couldn't really post in there because I would spent 10 years in the public school system. I invested $6,000 in this mastermind. 
Actually, her name's Angie, and there are soul CBD samples from her mastermind in your swag bags. And this is something else I want to bring back to value for you. Because I didn't necessarily get my $6,000. And I hear this all the time. Melissa, if I join your program, can you guarantee I'm going to make my money back? No, I can't. How are you going to show up? Secondly, the ROI doesn't always come immediately. Most importantly, the ROI often doesn't come immediately. So I invite you to get out of this transactional thinking because that $6,000 investment I made at the time, by the way, I was $100,000 in debt. I shit you not. I was crossing my fingers, closing my eyes that I would go through on my credit card, lying to my father about how much it cost. My dad's like, how much was that thing? I'm like, $60. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, you know you can't live in the basement, right? Yes, dad, I know. But I felt the fire from that investment, and I showed up. The very next uh, investment that I made, and come into a, we're coming to a point here, all right? You guys with me? We good? Yeah. Okay, you good? Because yeah. I'm completely detoured from what I planned to do, but I'm going to speak it from the heart. Yes. So, sports were my greatest teacher, grief was my greatest teacher, and business is my greatest teacher. And there are these quote cards you'll see everywhere. These are lessons I've learned from business. These are just my words. These are just my words. I had them put on tiles. And these are supposed to be a lot bigger when I'm in the room, but that was my error. I get really confused on the metrics from Mexico to the US. <laughs> I got a little confused. So, um, sorry. But like, here we go. We always get to choose the energy we bring to our business. Don't look for your business to bring you energy. Bring your business the energy you want to reciprocate back. These are all lessons I have learned from my business. And my whole thing today is showing you how you need to learn business strategy and you also need to let strategy help you, your business be your teacher. Because one of the biggest things, oh, oh, okay. Here's something I say all the time. You can, I could actually get away with hiding from some of my shit in grief because everyone felt really sorry for me. When Layden was alive, I could have gotten away with hiding a lot of my shit. Because I think we can all agree, sometimes our parents put our, their shit on us, oh, yeah. right? My business would not grow if I didn't break through my shit. And so the first thing that I broke through, second mastermind that I joined, $12,000 investment. I had made $5,000 at this time. So, you know, bank account wasn't looking so good. But I ended up in the community with Gerard Adams as my mentor. And I realized how afraid I was of being too much. Does anyone have that story? I don't want to be too much. Yeah, I don't want to be too much. Some of you are probably like, I don't even want to raise my hands. So I don't want to be too much. <laughs> I know, I know. I spent 10 years teaching. You think I, don't, I can't read the room? And I'll never forget this moment. I was on a call with Gerard, and I was actually gonna wait to share the story of Gerard until your intro, but we're just going. I was on a call with Gerard, and he was talking about storytelling, which he's gonna talk about with all of you today. And he's talking about the power of vulnerability and sharing your story, and I'm sitting there like, he didn't know my story. I don't think he knew it at this time. And I was like, well, what if your story's too heavy? What if your story's too heavy? And he was like, Melissa, that's exactly why you need to share it. The world needs to feel more comfortable in the heavy. Can we give a little round of applause for that one? Yeah. My entrepreneurial journey continued, and I'm really humbled to say that through understanding business strategy, and a lot of you really wanted to hone in on organic growth strategy. I went through all of your surveys last night. Organic growth strategy, we're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into all of that today. But I wanna remind you to let business be your classroom. Let it be your privilege. Like how good does it feel to take that energy to it? I always say it's like 
Treat your business like a child. You don't wake up and say, what's my child going to do for me today? Right? What does my child need from me today? Get up. What does my business need from me today? Not what does my ego want to do? What does my mind want to do? What does my business need from me today? And actually, in order to be clear on that, you need to have a clear roadmap, systems, processes, and strategies.